Good afternoon. Welcome to post-game coverage of Game 5 of the OHL Championship Series. The Hamilton Bulldogs, 3-2 winners this afternoon, taking a 3-2 series lead. Joined by Windsor Spitfires head coach Mark Savard, along with forward Daniel D'Amico. Coach, you mentioned after last game you weren't happy with the effort in Game 4. Uh, I know the result wasn't what you wanted, but were you happier with the team today? Yeah, very happy. I mean, we uh, we battled right to the last uh, last second, um, you know, and, and, and hockey's a funny game. You know, you, you make a little mistake and it goes in your net when you're playing so hard. And we never gave up. Um, you know, we've all done it. You know, the, you know, the messages we pick each other up here, we're, we're, we're a good hockey team, obviously. And uh, it's a battle. It's going to be a battle here. We're get, the good news here is we're going back home. You know, we owe our fans a good game, and I know these guys want to play a good game for themselves. So we're excited. We're still in it. Best of four. Again, I, I said it when we won, and I'm lose. It's first of four, so there's a lot of, a lot of hockey left. Daniel, you've been here before. Um, in fact, you have the benefit of playing at home in Game Six this time. You came out and play, played a couple of your best games this season, down three-two in a series. Is there is there still a belief there with this group? Oh, 100 uh, percent. Those guys in our room will never quit, no matter what the score is or what the series is at. Uh, like Mark said, we believe in every everything they they teach us, and all the boys will uh, execute any any given day. So, um, yeah, we're we're good to go. Questions now, guys. Yeah, Mark, you mentioned you guys have been in this spot before. Anything changed the game plan? I mean, you guys have been here before. Anything changed for tomorrow night's game? No, that's that's the good news about our team. You know, we, we just keep playing the right way, and we've done it all year, and we didn't change anything in the Flint series, and, and we're not about to change anything now. We just we just keep putting putting a great effort on the ice like we did today, and, and, you know, we hope the results change. Yeah, and Daniel, I mean, the ice has been quite uh, choppy in the series. How, how was the ice today? Uh, the ice is, uh, everyone's skating on the same ice, so I mean, uh, there's no excuses. Um, we're all on the same ice, and uh, everyone makes uh, plays on the same surface, so yeah, uh, can't use the ice as an excuse, just got to keep working hard. Yeah, Daniel, heading home tomorrow, how much more does that we is better than me mentality uh, go into tomorrow night? Yeah, I mean, we've been preaching it all year, that's our team identity, and um, of course, uh, our last game, do or die, we're going to have to give it all our best, and Everyone in that room knows that the we is greater than the me, so as long as we come out and play our best hockey, I think we should come out on top. For Daniel, a team that you haven't played all season long, this series has been very chippy. It's been a lot of, uh, it's been very intense out there. Just uh, what has it been like playing against this team, the two top teams in the OHL this year? There's been a lot of uh, animosity through, through these five games. Just uh, can you talk about the intensity level of both teams so far? Yeah, of course, we're the two best uh, teams in the Ontario Hockey League, so of course it's going to be a chippy one. Uh, I think our team responds great to the chippy hockey and, uh, you know, intense hockey. We all come out more and give a, an extra inch every shift. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, we're, we're doing great and we're going to respond tomorrow. And, uh, of course, it's going to be a chippy one again, but we'll have our fans at home. It'll be packed barn again. So uh, we're going to come out and perform for sure. Daniel, uh, could you comment on that and maybe walk us through that, uh, that save with about 90 seconds left? Yeah, I mean, uh, three three Windsor Spitfires in front of the net. Uh, I don't think the goalie could see it, but just the puck bounced right in front of the net, and uh, he got a blocker on it, I'm pretty sure. But uh, he's a hell of a goalie, so uh, he made the goalies are going to make those saves. But maybe tomorrow one of those will go in for us. So, uh, yeah, we just got to look, keep looking forward, and uh, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Chris Pomek from Live with CDP. How's the... Um the injury report going into tomorrow night's game. And this year, is Hamilton probably the most talented team you've come against across so far? The injury report? Or uh, not the injury report, but I meant... <laughs> no, it's uh, okay. Any gigs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, we're, they're all banged up. I mean, we're all banged up. We're, we're in the finals of the, of the, of the playoffs. So we're, there's some banged up guys, but they keep playing. And, you know, tonight... You know, uh, Maggio takes a big hit there early from Stavros. You know, he, he gets him a little high, I think, because, you know, his nose is bleeding. And then poor Maggio goes back out and gets a high stick in the face. He's bleeding even more. Um, and, you know, it's, it's tough, but the guys kept kept playing. Um, and I know Jay. Jay's an honest I, I played with Jay in number 17. He's an honest guy, and he, he always played an honest game. I just... It's frustrating to me when when you know guys go down very easily, and and I I just 
it bothers me. But again, the refs are refs, and they're going to make calls both ways. But again, we got to we got to play through that. I know we get frustrated about we battle, and uh, tonight it just didn't come our way. They're a great hockey team. Let's be honest, guys. Come on, they they they, they had a run uh, like no other, and you know our guys are, are giving everything they have, and, and our backs are against the wall like like in Flint, and and I'm really excited. I'm re I'm actually really excited about this opportunity. Back with more post-game coverage of Game 5 of the OHL Championship Series. The Hamilton Bulldogs, 3-2 winners this afternoon as they take a 3-2 series lead headed into Game 6 tomorrow night in Windsor. Joined by Hamilton Bulldogs head coach Jay McKee along with goaltender Marco Costantini. Coach, uh, a gutsy effort from your team today. Uh, Windsor pushed right down to the final buzzer, but have to imagine you're happy with the effort. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, to come back from a one-goal deficit more than once in the game, uh, the guys just uh, scraped and clawed. Um, you know, it's good to see that we're up against, uh, I've said it many times, a good hockey club. I think tonight's game was, uh, you know, just a hard-fought game by both teams. Uh, well checked. There wasn't a lot of room out there. Um, I thought we made some defensive errors that we can clean up next time. But uh, it was just a, a great hockey game. And, and um, you know, fortunately, we pulled off the win. Marco, 24 saves this afternoon. None bigger than the flurry you made there late in the third period, really under the gun. Uh, I guess that's what being a goaltender um, on this stage is all about, those big pressure moments. Maybe you can walk us through that uh, that little scramble. Yeah, so I think it was a point shot, and then um, someone got a body on it, got blocked, and then the puck ended the back door, and that kind of just threw my stick over and flew over and um, you know, made a save. Guys, we'll take questions. Yeah, Jay, now being up 3-2, how important was that to win that next game in the series? We saw that throughout where... You get momentum, then you just couldn't win. Coming back home, rocking at rocking atmosphere here today. How important was that for you guys to come out and really take advantage of that home ice advantage that you guys have? Well, the fans were amazing. It was a good. I would think it was their best turnout of the season. Uh, the players feel it. You feel it on the bench, the energy, and I think it showed in the way that we we started this game. I think we were out shooting them uh, six one or eight one at one point until we took a penalty. So you know, we certainly felt the the vibe and energy. It was great to see that that fan support for sure. Yeah, does anything change now being up 3-2? Anything change the game plan at all going into tomorrow night's game? Well, I, you know, I don't think we're, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel with things. We'll look at where we can be a little bit better. Like I said, I think we made some defensive errors tonight that we don't normally make. Um, but, yeah, it, it's uh, the focus has to be on one game and nothing else. Uh, one shift, one period, uh, one game at a time. Yeah, we can't start thinking about other things. And also, any update on Ryan Winterton? Uh, he's gonna, we're going to have to say he's day-to-day -day right now. have to see he's a little sore right now, so see how he does overnight and, and how much the ice bags help. Coach, a two-parter about your defense, you being a defenseman yourself. Just can you talk about um, you know, having your captain out of the lineup and Colton Cameron and the rest of those guys being able to step up in his absence and just the relentless play by your decor and having Steos back in the lineup for the last two games is definitely looks like it's made a difference, especially in both ends of the ice. Well, yeah, Nate, Nate has been incredible both ways on the puck, not just uh, offensively for us. He's been a great shutdown defenseman, can log big minutes, uh, plays with a physical edge to his game. Uh, Colton Cameron can't be replaced. He's a warrior. Um, you know, I think, he, I think he tore his MCL, uh, ACL, meniscus, and, and had a compound fracture and still finished his shift. I mean, that, that says what kind of a captain, what kind of a person and warrior he is. So he's not going to be replaced, but I think... Um, you know, it adds motivation to our guys. He's so well liked and such a great captain that uh, maybe more than anything, these guys want it for for him uh, just as much as uh, the team in general. And for Marco, all these games in this series have been very close. Kind of the bend but not break mentality. Late in the game, Windsor's tried to come back uh, multiple times in the series. Just how have you guys been able to kind of keep your composure and just being able to to finish out those games when Windsor's been pressing multiple times here throughout the series? Yeah, you got to stay calm out there. I think uh, I think Grush and I think Nate or Arbs are out there they're blocking a lot of shots. You know, those are big, huge for me. And um, I don't, they're getting pucks away from me. I've seen everything out there, and um, you know, I'm winning. Uh, Jay, kind of deja vu to last weekend. You win a tight one Sunday, then you get to go to Windsor on a Monday. What did you learn from that, going through that? Obviously, not the game you wanted, probably the worst one of the playoffs for you guys. What did you learn from that, going from that Sunday afternoon to Monday in Windsor? Well, I mean, they, they have great fan support there as well. Uh, that building uh, was close to full last game. It, it, no different than us. It gives them some energy. Um, you know, we, we've broken down the game tape and looked at where we can be better. There were a number of things we worked on after that game and and uh, kind of brought the fun back to, you know, a dressing room that I think was just feeling a little bit of pressure. Um, we, we did some things on the ice that got the guys laughing and uh, stuff that was revolved around things we need to do on the ice better. And, and uh, I think they responded well.
uh, Marco, in game six, talk about the PK, your defenders getting bodies in front of pucks, getting sticks in front of pucks. Uh, with you and them, the communication factor, that's, that's got to take a higher level here for game six in Windsor. Yeah, our PK's been really good lately. Um, last three games, I don't know if they got one on us. And uh, like I said, Drew's blocking everything out there. The guys are blocking everything out there, and I'm seeing everything. You're from here. What's it feel like in front of that crowd? Or can you, is it totally blanked out for you? No, it's great to be at home and playing for our home team. I got a lot of uh, family and uh, family and friends in the stand, so it's nice for them to come every game and get a lot of support too. Okay, thanks, Mark. Okay, uh, the play that Thomas makes on McTavish's tying goal there, can you address that and then address McTavish himself? <clears throat> well, uh, Patty Thomas has been playing on a line with Mason McTavish uh, for a lot of the season. Um, you know, he, he has the ability, he, he has a high IQ, he can make uh, great plays under pressure, uh, works very hard, and, and you know, he's, he's uh, probably, maybe I shouldn't say it's more of a pass-first guy. You know, he looks for the guys on the ice and he finds the seams, and, and he's been incredible, and, and Mason loves playing with him. I think that's probably the ultimate compliment for, for Patty. Uh, Mason, uh, he's a, he's a game-breaker. I mean, he can do things out there that, that not a lot of guys can do. Uh, you see tonight, he goes out there and, and scores two huge goals for us, and that's you know, part of why he was brought in. He has that ability. He also has a, a motor that never stops. He has the ability to play a lot <clears throat> and just keep going. So he's, uh, yeah, a great teammate. Good to have him. And, uh, yeah, we're fortunate that we have both those guys on our team. It's true that Zachary played with him, but he has to have Thomas on the line. Yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, with your, you know, when you're trying to find chemistry with your lines, um, you know, you, you talk to some of your players, and, and sometimes guys want to play together. Sometimes you put them together and it doesn't work, and sometimes it does. And, yeah, Mace uh, likes playing with uh, Patty. You know, they've got a good connection out there. And like I said, uh, mason has he's got a great shot, and, and Patty's a great passer, so he can find him uh, quite often like he did on that goal. Yeah, good minutes. I think, I think both both teams at this point in the season, uh, you know, you've got to run your big guys a little bit. Um you know, we're line matching uh, a little bit out here, so when they put their big boys out, we've got certain guys we like to get on them, and that's part of the uh, the chess match that the sport is. Sure. Chris Pauly from Live with CDP Podcast. Congrats on the win today, Jay. Um, can you tell us about the power play? How much uh, Did you make any adjustments to the power play? I was affected today, two power play goals, and was this your best uh, defensive performance of the season in the playoffs today against this uh, high scoring Windsor Spitfire team? Uh, I think both teams played a tight checking game. I don't know if it was our best defensive performance. We, we made some mistakes out there, but at the same time, Windsor earned the chances that they got. They're a great team that works hard. Uh, the power play, we made some changes. I don't think I need to get into it. I'll let Windsor do the scouting on that and, and see what we're doing. I'm sure they, they already know, but yeah, we made some changes and it clicked. It was good to see.